Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a video for you today on several sheets that I just made for Lonnie. Uh, and brother, I'm sorry, I don't remember where you're from. I'll uh, check the notes obviously before I put that shipping label together and I'll be sending this out today. So anyway, Lonnie asked for four different small projects. The first was a two, uh, sorry, a three and a half inch K-Bar TDI. He asked for double layer and the whole theme for this entire project, well, sorry, for three of the four sheets in this project, the theme was black and gray, and I'll pick which prints, which colors, all that good stuff. So, uh, this one you can see I've used Cryptek Raid Micro, which I think looks really nice against the black, and I've done that kind of border uh, reinforcement plate slash accent plate, kind of showing off the shape of the blade, and also giving a wider, more comfortable thumb ramp. Um, not that the regular thumb ramp is uncomfortable, but wider is definitely better. What was that a logo or a, a motto for? That was like a, it's like Trans Am or something. Pontiac Trans Am way back when, or Mercury Sable. I don't know. Some car person must watch this, so let me know in the comments below. Anyway, um, so we got the K-Bar TDI. What you're going to get when you order a TDI sheet from me, if you order it on a tech lock, you're going to get something similar to this, where it's got several different positions per 90 degree angle off of the tech lock. So you can get something like six positions uh, moving off this side of the tech lock, then six here, six here, and six here. Um, so it's quite versatile. There's an angle in there for just about everybody. Um, you're going to get excellent retention, but easy ballistic one-handed draw just to show you I mean pointing straight up almost getting that sheath to come off so um, it's pretty pretty nice sheath and there's no rattle no play the retention is really solid on this but it's very easy to draw uh, it's also 100% ambidextrous so sorry for everybody who's been watching all my videos recently I've done a lot of TDI's lately and uh, I always I always give that little spiel just so that all the new people watching know kind of what they'll get if they were to order something like this um, all right so TDI really love this thing and whoops, that's piece number one piece number two we have a SOG tsunami <sighs> excuse me folks all right SOG Tsunami, and this is a Tonto Point knife, very similar to uh, some of the Cold Steel. I can't remember what the name of the Cold Steel knife is that this reminds me of, but um, you can see here it's got a metal bolster. It's not just a rubberized handle. The rubber is very comfortable, and it's sort of uh, similar to the handle that you would find on like the SOG Pentagon and uh, some of those other knives in their series. but. I'm a big fan of SOG. I think they make really utilitarian stuff. Um, generally very pleased with uh, the ergo and the aesthetics and the quality of their steel. So anyway, especially for the price point. So let me know what you guys think of SOG and if you've ever used or had a SOG Tsunami. Give me your thoughts on that too. The sheath for this one, black with an end plate in Cryptek Typhon, which is mostly a black pattern, but it does have some gray and it's based on a Battleship Gray Kydex for the, uh, the base color. Um, because it is this weird shaped bolster um, with an aggressive backside to it, this is almost a 90 degree edge, it's kind of sharp on the back. I made the retention sort of a tapered entry the way I would with a lot of rubberized handles for knives like Mora, uh, various Mora knives. I basically taper the entry so that it's a little bit tight around the bolster itself and wide enough for the bolster to enter at the mouth of the sheath. What that does is as you get it past the entry of the sheath, you can see the natural stopping point is right there. And then it doesn't really have to overcome uh, a hot spot the same way that normal retention would. It's more like it just keeps getting narrower. <sighs> Sorry everybody. Um, so as it gets narrower, obviously you're going to bottom out once you hit that contour and the sheath should be in there, or the knife should be in there nice and snug. There's a little bit of play if you shake it hard enough, 
uh, but really not very much at all and you do have to shake it pretty hard to make that happen. Um, the draw is exceptionally smooth and this thing came out really nice. So, got the logo down there on the end plate. I'm really happy with this guy. Alright, the next one we have is a knife from Fiddleback Forge and for those of you who haven't checked out Fiddleback uh, you should definitely go do that. They make some really high quality stuff. Um, just beautiful craftsmanship. I'm really impressed with their uh, their work. I don't know if it's a team or if it's just one person or, or what the deal is there but man it's three and five minutes. This is not, this is not a good ratio. I'm really tired today. Yeah, you can see the giant bags under my eyes. I look like Vader after the helmet came off. Anyway, um, you can see those beautiful hammer forge marks there. I just think this is outstanding craftsmanship. A beautiful knife. I don't know what the model name or number is on this. Uh, I just know that it's Fiddleback. So you can see it's got a little engraving there on the spine. It says Fiddleback by AR. I assume AR is the uh, probably the maker so anyway I apologize for not knowing more about that um, for this one Lonnie asked for black with a carbon fiber end plate and he asked for a, a holder as well as the exotac fire rod from me also in black carbon fiber and we have it on a tech lock here for right hand scout carry Obviously this is going to be ambidextrous, so if you ever want to switch it, you can. It also will allow you to carry vertically or canted for a cross draw. So with either hand, you can find the angles of vertical, horizontal, or canted roughly at that angle. So if you're right-handed, you would put it on your left hip, reach across, and it's at a very comfortable angle for you to draw like so. It's got a nice little click going in. No rattle, no play. The uh, you can see there's very, very little contour on this knife to grip onto, so the retention is about as strong as I can make it. Uh, but be aware, you don't, you probably don't want to carry this sucker inverted, <sighs> especially if you're going to be doing anything, you know, really active. I would definitely stick to a horizontal or a vertical carry or canted, uh, but. Definitely no, no farther down than a 90 degree angle parallel with the ground uh, for whatever my thought is worth on that. But I do have a really nice sheath here. I'm really happy with how this came out. And again, just an exceptionally smooth draw and resheathing there. All right. And the last item in this bunch is a SOG Voodoo Hawk. I put this in my store yesterday. Uh, it was in the press and all you could really see was from here down and so I'd made some tongue-in-cheek comment on there like Conan sword or Thor's hammer uh, so I had a few people respond to it a few people guessed and I think one of the three nailed it said it was a SOG voodoo hawk so uh, congrats to that person unfortunately you don't win anything but a little bit of pride I guess um, so anyway again we got that black and gray theme going on I chose black and gray basket weave I also thought it would look nice to alternate the direction of the pattern. And that just sort of makes the contrast between the two patterns pop a little bit more. As you can see, I've done sort of my typical end plate style uh, edge work where I bring the reinforcement plate or accent piece almost to the edge of the base color. And so both edges are beveled, but you have just enough of the top of that base color on the edge to see the color and a little bit of that pattern. And uh, obviously I just cut a little design on here. Kind of looks like a bat wing or something. I don't really know. It's nothing intentional. Just thought that, that scoop pattern would look nice. Um, on the back here, you can see it carries on molly locks. And what I've done here is created a back plate. I'm actually going to put a couple more screws in that now that I'm looking at it. Uh, I'd meant to. I have drill holes that will line up with all of the eyelets on this sheet. So you can put as many as you want in there. I'm just going to add a couple extras. Um, it's connected right now through the molly locks only right there. So I'm going to add, I'll add three more 
for reinforcement and uh, you can always add more later if you'd like. Uh, basically what I've done on the back I've put this plate on there you can see I've done some outcrops here and the same over here and there are two holes in each of those uh, that will align vertically with the holes on the holes on the sheet. So these are spaced. Um, let me just confirm. I'm pretty sure it's four and a half. Okay. Center to center, you have a four and a half inch gap between these two molly locks. So they will fit into molly webbing. I'm going to give my molly spiel real quick. So I apologize to everybody else who's heard this, but for the new people, um, basically, uh, if you look at any of the stuff out there, not any, but if you look at a lot of the stuff out there, uh, a lot of these makers that are calling themselves custom Kydex, they're putting out things with molly locks on them that are not remotely spaced properly for molly webbing. So molly webbing, each loop center to center is at one and a half inches. So you have to move in increments of one and a half inches. So one and a half, three, four and a half, six, etc. Um, so when something isn't spaced properly, that means it is almost certainly not going to fit on a molly panel, thus completely defeating the purpose of having molly locks. Unless, of course, the user or the client has asked for mollies and they're clipping it onto like a really thin nylon belt or something like that. Um, but for the most part, if you're getting molly locks, it's going to go on, it's meant to go on molly uh, webbing. And uh, yeah, so anyway. I make sure that mine are spaced properly because I don't want people paying me good money to get something that doesn't actually function the way it's intended to function. Um, so anyway, that said, originally we were going to do this as a belt sheath on a tech lock. Um, and how this is going to work, sorry, this, uh, just describing this molly has a little bit of, it's like a little bit of plastic slag hanging off from the hinge inside this molly lock. Anyway, I'll get some tweezers and try to deal with that before I ship it. Um, so we were originally going to do this as a belt sheath on a tech lock. Um, so how that would work, Lonnie, is um, you'd actually, I think, want to go with... Well, I'm torn on this, brother. Okay. So the top, the top row from here to here, so excluding this last one here excluding this last eyelet, these are all spaced at three quarters of an inch. So if you were to decide that you wanted to switch over and put this on a tech lock, I would go with these two eyelets and just use a really thick spacer between each one and the tech lock. And you can find those spacers right here. So if you take your molly locks off, just grab those two spacers off and move them over here, put the hardware through, and that should do you just fine. The hardware that's going through the top here already, that will fit the tech lock. That'll all work together. So you just cannibalize it, take it off of the mollies, and put it through the tech lock, and uh, you'll be all set. Um, as far as the fit of the sheath goes, it's um, this is a really difficult hatchet. A lot of them have a little more forgiveness because there's nothing behind the handle. <sighs> Jump it. I think that's literally seven times I've yawned. This is ridiculous. Um, I guess it's like once every two minutes now. Um, all right, so a lot of hatchets and axes end just barely behind the handle. Obviously the head you know, has that little notch out here, the hammer notch. Um, but that makes it a lot easier because the whole thing just tapers toward the blade. And so drawing and resheathing is very simple. With something like this, especially looking for it to be you know, sort of like a one-handed draw sort of thing. Um, it was pretty difficult to come up with something that really works, but in the end, what I ended up doing was just molding it, and I had to loosen it just a little bit. So there is, I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a tiny bit of play if you manually, you know, try to move it around. I don't think you're going to get that, you know, that kind of play um, if you... Are using it like on a pack or something like that but uh, just giving you that disclaimer up front it does have just a little bit of play and how you want to draw it is pretty much kick out the handle 
or sorry, uh, kick the handle forward, which busts out the back, that little spike, and then you can just sort of twist it out. Uh, putting it back in, more or less the same thing, just put the, the front in first, try to get that handle to line up with the groove on the sheath as much as possible, and then you'll just kind of push it up and slam it home. So it's a very, very simple design. Um, hatchet sheaths are always a little bit less uh, finessed than a knife sheath. So these guys use just a little bit more of that kind of brute force. You know, maybe I'll even put a, a paracord handle on it to give you something better to grip onto so you can brace it and kind of tear it off. Uh, yeah, we'll see. But anyway, I do want to get this in the mail to you today, Lonnie. So um, sorry about this crazy change in light. I think it just went dark outside and I noticed the light wasn't aimed. Anyway, uh, hopefully you've been able to see everything okay. I've been able to on my camera, but that doesn't generally mean much of anything. So, all right guys. Anyway, uh, I'd love your thoughts down below on all of these knives, this Voodoo Hawk. Uh, see what you guys think of all this stuff. I think that Fiddleback Forge knife is absolutely beautiful. I'm a huge fan. Uh, I got to learn more about them and I got to buy something from them because I don't own any Fiddleback yet. So, um, all right guys. Comment down below, let me know what you think of all these sheaths, and uh, man, I'm losing it, I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for dealing with my rambling once again, and I hope to see you around in the next one. God bless.